I'm Dr. Michael Latola. And I'm Megan Strong. On today's Chairside Live, Megan doesn't think you can find pus in the human mouth. And we'll see why an apple a day keeps the IRS in your way. And in viewer mail, a doctor solves our lower bicuspid undercut conundrum from last week. That and more on today's Chairside Live. Hey now, hello and welcome to episode 125 of Chairside Live. We've got a good show for you today. It's the pre-Chicago Midwinter Show. I'm on a plane dun, dun, dun. as soon as this is over. This 7 degree, degree weather out here doesn't agree with me. I want mm. a 12 degree high and a 3 degree low. Sounds balmy. Chicago Midwinter. Doesn't that, doesn't that seem like if you came up with like Phoenix midsummer, people would go, whoa, that doesn't make any sense. That's right. kind of a lame idea. Yeah, it should be Los Angeles midwinter. San Diego midwinter. midwinter. Oh, perfect. Miami midwinter. That yeah. even has a little alliteration with it. Wow. So hopefully I'm going to be out there with uh, a friend of mine, Josh Austin, who's another dentist, amongst some other talks that I'm giving. Sure. And we're going to walk around and hopefully make fun of some of the booths and awesome. some of the mascots and demonstrations. So maybe next week we'll have some footage from Chicago Midwinter to share with everybody else. That would be great. Who's not going to go freeze their forceps off by heading <laughs> to the uh, middle of the country in some 12 degree weather. We've got an interesting case of the week for you today. It's really not a case of the week. I guess I'll call it a product of the week. It's something called Cloud Point. And if you've wanted to get involved with digital dentistry but haven't liked the idea of taking digital impressions, maybe this is something you might be interested in. Or maybe the lab you work with if you don't work with Glidewell they could be get involved with this and all of a sudden you could start to take advantage of some of the benefits of digital dentistry without having to take digital impressions yourself so that might be something you're interested in, in fact let's take a look at that now so what i wanted to show you this week for the case of the week is something that we're launching at chicago midwinter um, this week and it's actually called uh, cloud point it's really designed for laboratories but you can see a dentist kind of using this as well it's a model scanner and so it's something we use here in the laboratory and it's our way of uh, getting a case into the digital environment um, without having an intraoral scan because most dentists today still aren't taking digital impressions. It's only about 12% of the impressions we receive. And on the rest of them, they're polyvinyl and polyether. And as a result, we still have to pour it up uh, into a stone model and then we scan the stone models to get it into the digital environment. That's why when a dentist actually scans the patient's mouth and sends us a digital impression, we don't have to do any of the stuff I'm going to show you at the cloud point and that's why we give them um, $20 off because they save us all the time of having to pour it, articulate it, saw out the dye, pour a solid model, and then scan it all. So it's interesting. So a dentist could theoretically get this cloud point unit, put it in their office, take a regular polyvinyl impression like they usually did, have their assistant pour the model, and then scan the model and send us or another laboratory the digital information and save $20 and the price of this is about $11,000 which is cheaper than just about all the intraoral scanners that are out there. Uh, plus you don't have to put anything in the patient's mouth. You take an impression just like you would now but you wouldn't save on the polyvinyl like you do with a digital impression. So let me just show you how it actually works. Um, again once the models are poured they're affixed to a little uh, plate that you can see in there. A platform with some putty and the device is actually going to scan it with a, a blue light and you can see it turning it at several different angles and so typically um, you had to take you had to move uh, a laser light around or you had to do it by hand to be able to scan all of these but now it's going to scan it all at the same time you can see the um, the die with the uh, margins trimmed on the very middle uh, of the plate as it tips it to its seven predetermined positions and then you can see uh, the solid model with the prep on it to the left and then you can see the opposing model over there and then over on the right you can see the acquisition screen as it actually gets all this information and, and starts to put it together and so by grabbing it at all these different angles and then stitching it together it's able to pick up this information not unlike if you had a digital impression unit in the patient's mouth and you were moving it from uh, buccal to lingual, mesial to distal in the patient's mouth. But of course the big advantage here is there's no tongue, uh, there's no saliva, and so you can see it took just over a minute uh, to get both arches and the dye by itself. And that's definitely faster than you would see 
uh, with any intraoral scanner. It takes a little bit longer um, to do that. And so you can see that little blue area now where it's taken the dye that was sawed out of there and correlated it with the solid model. So it's identified those two teeth and then it's able to articulate those two models together. And again, you can see the gray and the yellow uh, showing where there's areas uh, where it's come together and it correlates and it finds the bite for those two. Uh, you can also design your restoration uh, if you want to using the software and you can see that it automatically marks the margin for you. But if there's kind of an indistinct margin like there is on this tooth, you can pull it and adjust it and put the margin wherever you want to. And then it proposes a crown and rotates it uh, into place. It, it takes uh, from the anatomy library that we have in the cloud and brings down the most likely crown for that, puts it into place, and then uh, matches up the marginal ridges and the width of the cusps with the adjacent tooth. And you can certainly play with that as much or as little as you want. You can set the occlusion so it's in contact with the opposing tooth, or you can set the occlusion so that it's slightly out of contact with the opposing tooth, just in case your assistance temporary uh, isn't as accurate uh, as it should be. You can adjust the contact and to close it or open it as much as you'd want. You know, we, I prefer my crowns with a five micron space opening between the designed crown and the adjacent tooth. This makes sure that if we get any movement of the tooth with the temporary on, which is always gonna be in a mesial direction, that I'm not gonna have a tight contact when it comes time uh, to actually seat that crown. So yes, this was intended for laboratories. Maybe it's something that, uh, that your laboratory wants to get involved with so you can start to take advantage of having the exact same amount of dice spacer, the exact proximal contact, the exact occlusal contact, or maybe you even wanna be a red and gate dentist who starts to pour uh, their own models and trim a die and scan it, send it to a lab to save $20 as well. So whether you get involved with it or recommend it to your lab. Uh, CloudPoint uh, looks to be a, a new way for dentists and laboratories to get involved with digital dentistry and really start to take advantage of the CAD CAM uh, design and therefore the CAD CAM milling of restorations that have really brought remakes down here in our laboratory for the majority of our dentists. Thank you for that, Dr. You're B. Welcome. Now let's go to a segment we call Viewer Mail. This week's viewer mail comes to us from Dr. Jim Bertini, and he writes in after watching last week's episode of Chairside Live in the Case of the Week, and he writes, Hi Mike, I enjoyed your Case of the Week on last week's episode on lower premolars and avoiding undercuts on long preps. I've utilized your reverse prep technique in the past, and I too have encountered this issue. Long preps are usually due to recession. What I do is start with the reverse prep technique and then evaluate my final product. What I do is place a minimum of a 45 degree bevel on the cusp where the recession occurs. This way, I'm not simply lopping off the occlusal any more than is needed. Once I reduce the offending cusp, I go back and use a perio probe under loop magnification to see if there's still an undercut. If there is an uncut, I now find it much easier to smooth out the long axis of the prep as there's now less of it for the bird to deal with. This way, I deal with a potential undercut at prep time and also leave as much tooth structure on the occlusal to prevent encroachment on the pulp. Well, I really like that a lot. That's, uh, Jim, that was a, uh, some great advice. Uh, long prep, no see, by the way. Uh, and so what he's saying, Megan, is rather than taking a tooth and, and reducing, say, two millimeters, right. but it's still nine millimeters long, making it almost impossible to see whether or not it's undercut. Instead of taking the cusp, the offending cusp, I hope we don't have to bleep that, the offending cusp. We, instead of reducing that just more and more to make it shorter, he just puts a bevel on the top of it and angles it over to the side. So he's not shortening the entire occlusal surface and he's not encroaching that much on the pulp. He's just putting a very long bevel that slopes all the way out on the outside. So now on the outside of the tooth, instead of being seven millimeters long, it might be four millimeters long and it's much easier to see. So Jim, that's fantastic. That's actually a really good idea and a really good way to deal with that is put that long bevel 
uh, on whichever cusp. And it's probably usually going to be the buccal cusp because that's probably where we have the problem with the attached gingiva. We've had all the recession. And now we've got that super long cusp over there, including those preps from last week. I doubt you're gonna ever really see that on the lingual. We don't see that much lingual or palatal recession. So that's a great idea, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, is to put Jim's long bevel and to go from the occlusal surface at a 45 degree angle, thereby shortening the effective length. We've got plenty of height on this preparation. We don't need to worry about mechanical retention. We do need to worry about whether or not we can see if there's an undercut. And it's certainly a lot easier to tell on a buckle wall that's say four millimeters tall than one that's seven millimeters tall, but rather than shorten the whole prep by three millimeters, he's doing a long bevel over that way to make that wall smaller. So that's fantastic, Jim, that's a great idea. And um, as a reward for coming up with that suggestion, we get? have the Bruxer Adjustment and Polishing Kit, nice. which I know you'll enjoy. Yes. And I noticed we have a choice of actually three Cherryside Live photographs. None of which I am pregnant. We have pregnant, Megan so that's awesome. with pursed lips. Oh, is this after or before? This is the first episode back. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, I forgot so soon. So there's pursed lips. Right, that's me just trying to, nope, that's not what that looks like. It's, it's trying to stop myself from saying whatever I'm about to say. There's Megan, shock, shock and, and awe. awe. Yeah, you look, you look, uh, very surprised. Yeah. As what though, happened? I don't know. Do you remember what happened there? I think it might have been when we were announcing that I was back. Oh, or you said that could something have been mildly offensive. <laughs> inappropriate. Mm -hmm. That's right. I remember going to HR right after that. Yep. Okay. And the last one is what I like to call America's sweetheart. Mildly, my, I can't, let's try that again. I mildly sedated, it looks like. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mildly sedated, but in a, in a good kind of women not be talking too much way. I'm just kidding. That's a, which one do you think Jim deserves for that great tip? I think he should get the surprise one. Really? Because we're surprised that he came up with such a good tip? Yeah. Excellent. All right, Jim. Well, this and the Bruxer Burkitt will be on their way Yay. to you. Thanks again for writing in with that advice. And if anybody else has any different methods for dealing with those long, long preps, especially lower bicuspids, upper bicuspids too, anywhere there's been gingival recession, Please send them in, we'll acknowledge your tip as well and kind of hopefully make these preps a little bit easier for all our And do you know where they send it to? Where? Chairside Live at GlidewellDental.com. Oh yeah, I thought you meant which lab. <laughs> yes, that, that is the email address they send the tips to. Yes, I just wanted to remind everyone in case they were unaware Thank of you. where to send it. Thank you, appreciate yes. that. Do you have any news for us today? I do. All right. If you're looking for tools to help educate your patients on the importance of dental hygiene, well, look no further. A viral video of a man getting his teeth cleaned for the first time in 10 years just might do the trick. Let's take a look. Now, I'm, this is going to be interesting because I've seen people where it's been longer okay. th than 10 years. We, we have some uh, technicians here at the laboratory who came to this uh, laboratory and they've been here for maybe 20 years mm -hmm. and they really never had any dental work done while they were in whatever country they came from. Sure. And, and even here sometimes they haven't. So we've seen stuff like this before. The amazing thing about this to me is that you told me it's got over 1.5 million views. Mm -hmm. Who knew the American public or just the public at large worldwide would be so interested in seeing what we would call a gross debridement right. oh that Here is pretty go. gross yeah you can see that so that's an oh, oh, <laughs> right? so that's an ultrasonic scalar so it looked like those are the teeth but you can see that it's those are huge chunks of tartar right. and people right. a lot of times will ask where does tartar sauce come from stop that, it this is out of mcdonald's but look at this how raw and red the gingiva is when he takes right. that out right. and, kiss, and kissing him no. before this or even being near him sitting next to him on an airplane that kind of periodontal that, that smell. That breath is enough to clear reeks. a room. And the other thing that causes a lot of bad breath that has nothing to do with this video, mm. uh, people who don't brush or scrape their tongues. And I just had a company send me some tongue scrapers. You weren't here, but uh, it's amazing the difference between I've been brushing my tongue and now you take a tongue scraper and yeah. scrape it and you get even more of a fur coat off your tongue and you begin to realize it's kind of gross, so a lot of bad breath comes from that, but you can just imagine, there's got there's trillions of bacteria in each of those chunks that falls off. That is, yeah. And they're excreting acid the whole time, these bacteria, that's how they start tooth decay, sure. that's why the gingiva is all irritated like that, it's had no stimulation whatsoever. Uh, I think every dentist has seen something along the lines of this, so we're not really all that grossed out by this. Right. We see we see a lot more gross stuff with uh, molars, with pus coming out of it and things like that. And pus just, in the mouth. 
Oh, are you kidding me? When you see like a molar that's waving back and forth and ready to come out, you'll push on it and pus will start no, to erupt no, from around no, a root. No, no, no. You show me that, and uh, that'll... Okay, I will look for it during the second news story. Yeah, and you know what? Actually, I was going to say what is kind of scary about that video is the fact that I wasn't that grossed out by it. Yeah, it's really not. I kind of had like a slight satisfaction from seeing it get cleaned up and ugh. I think it taps into that thing. Are you, there, women fall into two groups. Are you one of the ones who likes to like pop zits on a boyfriend or a husband's back? I'll let my husband answer that question. Oh, what, are we going to call him? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Use a lifeline? You or male. Is that a yes then? He's going to write in. <laughs> that that yes, you enjoy it is. doing that? I do. Well, this is that same kind of thing. This is taking the infection and draining it out and releasing the evil spirits like you do from those boils on his back. <laughs> If that's in fact what we're talking about. Anything else? <laughs> oh gosh, yes. A receptionist at a New York dental office stole confidential information from hundreds of patients and teamed up with a former Apple employee. They opened fraudulent credit lines and bought $700,000 in Apple gift cards, authorities said. She allegedly took information from 250 patients including birthdays, addresses, and social security numbers, and emailed the information to her cohort, a former Apple salesman. The woman used the patient's information to apply online for instant Apple credit lines, ranging anywhere from $2,000 to $7,000. She then worked with three Apple employees to buy gift cards with the money. The four were indicted on 394 counts of grand larceny and identity theft for the scam that ran from May to November 2012. Wow. Holy genius bar. Right. I don't, well, it didn't say. It said he was a salesman. But Apple really doesn't have salesmen. But I guess it's just one of the people in the store and not necessarily somebody at the genius bar. Right. So 250 patients' records working with the not-so-genius bar guy. And seven hundred thousand dollars. That's amazing. That's unreal. In Apple gift cards. Right. Wow. That, That's and a so, lot of iTunes songs. Right. <laughs> I'm assuming, obviously, they were probably, you know, buying computers or whatnot, but. That's it. That's almost a million dollars. Right. And Apple just had a sales record in the first quarter of this year. That's probably most of it. <laughs> They're going to go now watch all of a sudden on a long slide heading down. But, right. But I just always wonder how these people think they're not going to get caught. Right. Eventually, yes, you're, you, you have to get caught. And I don't know if you're going to stash enough of it away where you feel like right. you're going to be okay. Or maybe you just feel like you're never going to get caught and yeah. you're too smart to get caught. Well, obviously not. And, and really, when you're dealing with that amount of money. It's not like it's just little pocket change that would go under the radar, but when you're working towards a million dollars, I think someone's going to start questioning what's going on. Apple gift cards, though, at least it, it's cool that they were doing it for that. It, what if it had been like Panera gift cards? Right. Or like uh, Bass Pro Shops? I mean, just something kind of like, well, it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. I lectured in a Bass Pro Shop last week, and it you was huge. You did not. Yes. It, it was fantastic in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, it's the flagship store. It's where uh, Springfield, Missouri is the home to Bass Pro Shops. And it was the one that we have out here yeah. in Cucamonga. You could fit like 10 of those inside of this thing. It was unbelievable. What? Also the home of O'Reilly Auto Parts, by the way. Wow, Springfield, nice. Missouri, quietly uh, big in uh, this type of industry. Okay. This is not a viral video. This only has 1,500 views. Okay. This is from Savannah Schwen, whoever Schwen. that is. And this is on YouTube, and this is appropriately titled, Puss Behind oh My, my God. Back Should molar. I be scared? Should this be... sounds like a fish song. I kind of want to cry. Now watch. She's got the... Okay. There's... See the pus? Yeah. Squirting out as she pushes with the Q-tip. That is... See it? And it's kind of bubbling out of there? Ew! Ooh, Savannah, let me guess, still single? Stop that, Savannah! Why are you putting pus coming out from behind your molar on a video? How did she discover that, Is I this wonder? on her Tinder profile? <laughs> is this on her uh, Plenty swipe of Fish? Swipe left, or what is... I'm yes, obviously, oh, you swipe down on this six okay. feet under and put it way got away. It. You don't want to see this. Uh, I don't know where that pus is coming from. Maybe she's got a wisdom tooth back there that's impacted. Ew. But now you've seen pus in the mouth before. You don't even want to see tonsil stones, what grows on people's tonsils. No, thank you. Yeah, and it comes out like in the shower, and then they spit it and force it down the drain. Okay. Joe gonna... Coy, famous comedian, once personally told me a story about tonsil stones on the Adam Carolla show. That's I'll spare it. It's dis disgusting. Yeah, it's absolutely no, thank disgusting. You. you don't want to hear it. Nope. Well, that about wraps it up for this disgusting episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan's Queasy Stomach, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. Thank you for that, Dr. D. 
Now let's go to a segment we call Case of the Week. What? <laughs> you screwed me up because you did the long blink and nod. Thank you for that, Dr. D. It's my pleasure. Wow. Now let's go to a segment we call View <laughs> I know how you like mispronounced words, like supposedly. Supposedly, people, really? Look it up. And emailed that information to her cohort. A former Apple, say, I said cohort, weird, so let's start over from the top anyway. And there's all sorts of question marks in there, which I'm not sure. Cohort. Glove department. Glove department. <laughs> For the car. I can't remember who used to say that. Somebody when I was growing up used to say it's in the glove department. Uh, at what store, hey, Macy's? <laughs> I've been brushing my tongue and now you take a tongue scraper and scrape yeah. it and you get even more of a fur coat off your tongue.